We are the Department of Anthropology at the University of South Florida in Tampa, Florida. In 1974, the department established the first MA program in applied anthropology in the United States. It developed an MA track in public archaeology, uh, also a first in the country. Skip ahead 10 years to 1984, the PhD program uh, was established in applied anthropology, and this is a first in the field of anthropology. Our faculty members conduct community and lab-based basic and applied research uh, to address and find solutions for global human problems. And we work in health and illness, sustainable resource management and economic development, community identity and heritage, the social constructions of race, ethnicity and gender, and past human systems and behavior, including Antoinette Jackson's uh, efforts to engage students in heritage research, Lorena Madrigal, who is a biological anthropologist, is doing some very interesting research on the genetic ancestry of an Indo-Costa Rican community. Tom Placan, who is our associate chair, um, has been doing research as part of the Crystal River Early Archaeological Project. Nancy White is our senior archaeologist. She has been doing field work and running field schools uh, on the prehistoric and early historic archaeology in Northwest Florida. Well, many of our projects are geared toward understanding the human past in the region, but also finding out information that might be useful today. On St. Joseph Bay, which is up in the Panhandle west of Apalachicola, on sites that are called shell middens. So midden is a garbage pile that past people left. We've been working to show, first of all, what season were they there. A student did stable isotope studies of the shells, found from the oxygen levels what season people were there. But he also, from the carbon levels, was able to show how the modern bay is so much more polluted when he compared it with modern shells of this type. We don't know who these groups were. The only way we can understand them is through their archaeology, through their material culture. I've been working the last few years in this uh, uh, site. Uh, it's called Genovese Cave, and it's the westernmost point in Sicily. And it was discovered these very important paintings inside uh, that go back probably at least 10 or 12,000 years. What we've started doing is going and actually recording these pictures and doing some analyses on them to see what kind of paint was being used. We have uh, a very fancy device called a portable x-ray fluorescent spectrometer and we can go and hold that up right to the painting without having to remove a sample so it's not being destructive in any way so we're really able to learn about the technology that they had but also about the preservation. This has lasted for thousands of years, uh, but how do we make sure that it will last, you know, let's say for the next uh, couple of hundred years as tourists and others uh, go and see these very, very important paintings? So Elizabeth Bird is uh, working on a community collaboration. Uh, this is known as the Asaba Project. We're looking at the history and the memory of a massacre that happened in the Civil War, in the Nigerian Civil War um, in 1967. The notion of working with the community, uh, not on the community, but working with the community actively to create this, uh, this new memory is, I think, a very important part of, of what we're doing. Kevin Yelvington is doing an ongoing study of wine tourism in Southern California which is supported by the National Science Foundation. We're looking at wine production. Uh, we're looking at the promotion of the place as a touristic venue, as a site of tourism. I'm looking at, we're looking at labor. These are undocumented workers who work in very harsh conditions. We know, need to know about these conditions in order to make the changes that are needed and that are only right. So several of our faculty work on issues relating to undocumented migrants, and in particular, Heidi Castaneda and Angela Stisi have been doing uh, research on a variety of issues and challenges that these folks are presented with. 
Most of my research is focused on migrant health issues, specifically um, how health policies and health policy changes have impacted immigrant communities of various types. I've been looking at how the Affordable Care Act is impacting immigrant communities here in the United States, including uh, communities and families that are mixed status, so that have mixed legal status where the children might be U.S. citizens, for example, um, and the parents may have a, a undocumented status. So looking at how um, policies, health policies impact those families. So I've been collaborating with um, a geographer, Matt Coleman, on studying immigrant and immigrant policing, immigration enforcement in the U.S. South, and we've been working in Atlanta, which has been um, kind of a hotbed for anti-immigrant policies in recent years at 287G and secure communities, as well as state-level anti-immigrant policies. And so the work has been studying how immigration enforcement is happening on the ground, what are the kind of the logics of, of the devolution of immigration enforcement from the federal level down to state and local levels, what does that look like in practice, and then what are the effects of it in the ways that people are organizing in response or resisting those, those policies. Tara Dubell is a cultural anthropologist who recently conducted research on women's microfinance groups in Mali, West Africa, where over half a million poor rural women Malian villages were trained in savings and small loan investments, which ultimately improved household food security and increased women's access to social capital and leadership. The Globalization and Community Health Field School is uh, directed by Nancy Romero Daza and myself. This is an intensive summer program done in rural Costa Rica. In addition to providing tools for research, we also want our students to learn about the culture of the communities with whom we work. And um, so part of the, of the program is the homestay component. That part uh, included well, perhaps the most rewarding uh, segment of the program, which was the homestay, living with the local family, and learning so much more through experience than you really could any other way. Erin Kimmerly directs the Forensic Anthropology Lab at USF. Kimberly and USF anthropologist Antoinette Jackson and Christian Wells, along with several of their students, have been investigating the Dozier School for Boys after allegations of abuse that occurred decades ago recently surfaced. That project has involved uh, surveying to look for unmarked burials, the excavation of 55 unmarked burials, and the entire process for identifying the 55 individuals. It's just a great way for them to get hands-on experience and everything that they're learning you know, can be applied in this one sort of case study. So the three of us work together on a National Science Foundation project um, that's called the PIRE, which is Partnerships for International Research and Education. And the global uh, emphasis of this is focused for us in the Caribbean. We have two sites in the United States, uh, Virgin Islands in St. Thomas and in Belize. Uh, and in both cases what we're trying to do is develop global, uh, committed, engaged research teams that have experience from the partner countries as well as USF. We've been working in, um, the, in Belize and in the U.S. Virgin Islands with um, stakeholders to develop strategies for a legitimate involvement of people and communities in determining the best fit for these new kinds of, of technological um, advances that our, our colleagues in, in science and engineering are developing. I think one of the things that, uh, that anthropology does as a discipline, and, and particularly the work that, we, that we've been doing in Belize, is uh, looking at how to translate people's lived experiences, what's important to them. For example, uh, putting in a centralized wastewater system uh, in a tourist development, developing area in Placencia in Belize. Uh, we're really um, interested in how people perceive that uh, project, how it's gonna impact them, and really mm -hmm. how they would like to see their community uh, change in the future. So what's, what is sustainable tourism gonna mean for them and how does that relate to uh, regional and national level politics and decision making? It is a project that has the goal is to create these international research teams, put in place new and innovative methodologies, and also facilitate the development of community-based interactions so when we finish the project, 
uh, much of the research we did and the skills and techniques will stay in country. One of the very important things that distinguishes anthropology from, from other biological sciences is that we take a broader, more integrated approach to humans, human lives and how the world gets under the skin of the person and impacts what their, their well-being. Some of my previous work has been done in Kenya to see how mothers and infants shared immune systems. Um, and now I'd like to do that work in the U.S. and collect information here in Tampa. Um, I might be able to do comparison so I can see how these populations actually do differ. And if they have any impact on infant outcomes, we might be able to change how we look at infant feeding and how we take care of infants early in life. Neuroanthropology is a new field that I've helped develop uh, over the past eight years or so. And what it does is integrate anthropology with neuroscience. As I saw students um, going to Google to find ideas and to find information for papers. And I realized that unless anthropology was on the web in an active way, then we wouldn't be present um, in these students' lives. And so uh, Greg Downey and I founded Neuroanthropology as an independent blog in 2007. And in 2010, it moved to become part of the public library of science. We, uh, in a typical year, reached 200 uh, countries and territories. And uh, between the two blogs, uh, recently have been having about uh, 800,000 visits a year. Robbie Baer works with undergraduate and graduate students, and they're doing research with the Burmese refugee community in Tampa. And these are folks who are also participating in the community garden. I became interested in doing what I could to involve my students from anthropology classes in the work of the garden. We got to do data collection uh, through uh, focus groups, one-on-one -on -one interviews. Just understanding how all this sort of nondescript leafy green surroundings translates into cultural importance for these people is amazing. To learn how what might look like lettuce or broccoli to us is actually something so much more integral and part of their history and their culture. Our department focuses on applied anthropology and this is really a great example of how we can use our knowledge of cultural differences to really make an impact, to really make a difference.